So let's apply what we know about finding acceleration directions on curved motion to this example. So a marble uh, rolls down a smooth ramp, it's got this shape, um, and we want to know what direction the marble's acceleration is when it passes through point A on the ramp. And the answer is going to be it's in direction A or B or C or D or E, F, G or H. Right, so these are the directions you have to choose from. And we're releasing the marble from rest. It's going to let it go. And it's going to roll down this smooth ramp. So it's going to go faster and faster as it goes down the hill. Um, so I'm going to give you a second to think about it. And in fact, you should pause the, uh, the tape until you decide which way you think the acceleration points to the marble when it goes through this point. And again, just think about you know, how you think it's moving. Uh, just take five seconds to think about which way this is going to go. All right, that was a chance for you to stop it, right? That was not enough time to think about it, so again, you should have paused it and really thought about it. And if you haven't done it yet, pause it right now and think about it again. You need to commit to an answer, right? Because if you don't commit to an answer, then what's going to happen is that when we do it, you'll say, oh, of course we thought it went that way. Okay. So how are we going to find this out? It's going through point A, so we know where the acceleration is supposed to be found. Uh, but the thing we don't know yet is what the velocities look like before and after. Because remember, you cannot find the acceleration unless you know how the object is changing its velocity. All right, so how do you think? Do you think it's going to be going, if I pick a point before, remember I don't want to pick it too far away because I don't know what's going to happen down below. So I'm going to pick a point that's you know, reasonably close before it, and then I'll think about the point after. So as the marble comes rolling down the hill, do you think it's going to go faster as it goes through point A? Is it going to slow down? Is it going to go at a constant speed? How do you think it's going to move? Well, it's a smooth ramp, and so it seems reasonable, perhaps, to think that it should speed up as it goes down the hill. Um, and you can think about yourself riding a bike down a hill, uh, at least for a while, until the air resistance builds up. Uh, you know that you go faster and faster. So I'm going to pick the next spot, not closer, not the same distance, but a little bit further down the hill. And again, you need to have two velocity vectors to find the acceleration. So we draw them in. So here's V1. is V2. So V2 is longer because it's faster, and it's a little bit flatter because of the way that the, the slope is changing. Great. So now I have those. I have to put them tail to tail. So if I go to the other side, I'll take my V1, and I'm just trying to think about it. Here's how my pen is. Looks like this. That was maybe a smidgen long. So there's V1. V2 is longer than this pen, and it's kind of flat. So as I move it across, I can see that it's going to come something down like this. And again, the reason I knew how to draw them, and I'm going to double check, is my V2. I'll pull my pen across. That looks right. Maybe just a smidge longer. So there's V2. And to find the acceleration direction, I have to join V1 to V2. But I'm going from V1 to V2. So the change in velocity is something that's almost horizontal. So if I pull this across here, I can say that it looks like the acceleration, the acceleration has a direction like this, which looks like direction G. Okay? Now, a lot of you might have thought it went in direction H. Okay, we, we've looked at circular motion. Circular motion with constant speed, the acceleration should point towards the center of the circle. But this is not constant speed. Another way to think about it, you might say, well, I just drew my arrow slightly differently. And I, I want to point out something, is that there are many different possibilities here um, if you draw your V2 slightly differently. Now, again, it should be longer than V1. It should be flatter than V1. Um, and that's, you might think, is going to change some things. But let's look and see what that would do. If you thought that V2 should have been longer, you said V2 was longer because the point was down here, all that does on this picture, because this new V2 is longer and a little bit flatter than the first V2, it doesn't do much to changing the shape 
well, the direction of, of delta v. It's, now it's down a little bit, but it's still mainly across. Or if you'd say, well, I didn't want the spot to be quite so far. I didn't think it should have been that far. Maybe it should have been somewhere here. What that will do is that will give you a slightly shorter v2 than before, but also a little bit steeper. And so again, you'll come up with something, a delta v that's still basically in the same direction. And so what I'm looking for is to make sure that you drew your v2 longer than your v1, and it should be flatter than v1 was, right? Because of the way the curve is going. Um, and so any real answer is going to show up somewhere in this area of the thing, right? So it's going to be somewhere within this region, uh, mainly in the direction g. f is the direction you would get if an object was just going down a straight ramp with increasing speed. So if we try to draw that in here, let's say this was a ramp, and the marble was rolling down a ramp like this, and you were interested in this point A, you pick a point before, a point after, further down the ramp, because it's going faster. You have B1, V2. When you put them tail to tail, here's V1. V2 is longer but down the hill. I just put them off from each other just slightly so that they don't cover over each other. But you can see that to make V1 look like V2, I'm going to have to go from the tip of V1 to the tip of V2. I would get a delta V that pointed in direction F. So in fact, H would have been the direction you'd have if it was circular motion at a constant speed. F is the direction you'd have if something is just speeding up but not changing direction. Um, so what we have here is a combination of both. We've got something going in a circular path, part of a circular path, with increasing speed, though, not constant. And so what we ended up with is an acceleration that's kind of a combination of going down the hill, or having an acceleration down the hill, and an acceleration inwards. All right, so I hope you guessed the right answer on that. And if not, go back, draw this ramp again, maybe draw it the other direction. Pick your V1s and V2s, draw them. And again, I think at the start, the hardest uh, piece that people have is to put the V1s and V2s with their tails together and to draw them exactly how they were on the picture. V1 steep and short, V2 flat and longer, and that gave us what we originally had.